Good morning, friends. Today, I'm going to take you through everything that we used for my seventh grader and tell you how we liked it and our opinion on it before I do the big reveal of what we're going to be using for the next school year. So stay tuned and I will get all of that information for you so you can see how this year went. Hey friends, so I love these types of videos where we just talk straight curriculum and just how we liked something. So this is just strictly my opinion. None of this is sponsored. Um, I don't have anybody sponsoring this video or anything like that. Now some of these books I will have more information on and I will try to leave the links down below in the description box for that. Like some of these I might have already done like a full 10 minute review on or something. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time diving into each one of these or anything like that. So this is everything that we used for my seventh grader. Now my seventh grader is a little bit advanced. Um, we, walk a, we walk a pretty fine line between keeping things complicated enough but yet keeping things around his age too. We don't want to put him in high school, you know what I mean? So it, it's, it's, it can get complicated sometimes, but I feel like we had a pretty good mix this year. I'm, I'm very happy with everything. Um, I probably wouldn't have done anything different to be honest. So kind of like some hits and misses, but not a whole lot of misses. I'm gonna be straight forward with you guys from the beginning, but I'm gonna give you my opinion right out of the gate here. Okay, so I'm going to kind of just arrange everything here so it doesn't look like I am constantly like swinging, but bear with me because everything's kind of on a table and I'm gonna try to make this as easy as possible. If I seem a bit off, it's because I cannot have coffee and it's killing me. <laughs> I am drinking black tea. I'm on the autoimmune protocol diet and the elimination phase where I can't have coffee is going to be the death of me, but we're making it. <laughs> so we're just gonna start with everything that's on top here. So general science, this is from Apologia. This is what they recommended for middle school, grade seven, really like this one. I have a full video review on this one. I don't need to spend a whole lot of time on it. This is just a, this is exactly what it is, what it says it is. It is general science. So you're going to get kind of like an overview of tons of different science topics from geology to marine science. Really, really cool stuff. Probably one of my very favorite books, like science books that we've ever done. So really enjoyed this one my son really enjoyed it and we really enjoyed that it was kind of a transition into the older stuff so he felt um definitely like he was challenged this is definitely a more challenging type one but not everything is going to be required of course or anything like that but he wanted to do everything you know he wanted to go all out with this one this was a very good purchase for us one of his electives was visual latin and he finished visual latin one in the middle of the year last year with Compass Classroom and moved into Visual Latin 2 a few months ago. And he is, I don't know, maybe like not even a quarter through the way through Visual Latin 2. So we're going to carry this over into the next year. He really likes Latin. I was surprised that we kind of just picked it up as a elective that, you know, he just wanted to just kind of like play around in it because I have the Compass Classroom membership where we get access to all the classes and he happened to see it in there and he was like can i can i try some of these classes and i was like sure i mean we we have them as a membership so he can do whatever he wants in there and he really liked it so i bought him the books and it, he just took off from there so we have really enjoyed this class i'm really glad that we did this one and then he gets to to finish latin 2 next year so the, the videos are funny. He just, he really enjoys this one. Okay, for Bible, we did a, um, 
a family style Bible with my high schooler and we did how Jesus built his church from generations. I have a video review of this one I believe on my channel. I will try to link that one. Get this book. Just get this book. This one is Honestly, I think that this is great for adults. There was so much that I have learned in here. We have not finished it yet. We are like a couple chapters from the end. I love this book. This has sparked so many good conversations about church history. And I grew up in a church that really didn't dive into church history at all. So this felt like fresh information to me. And I'm glad that the church that I go to now does church history, but, um, yeah, so much of this I felt like I was playing catch up with. So love, love, love this book. So very informative, so rich in theology. Just, just get this book. It's a great coffee table book, if anything. For history, we did Not Grasses, America the Beautiful. And we are almost at the end of book one. We've been kind of playing catch up a little bit because we took a little bit too long at the beginning of the year. Um, there are 75 lessons in book one and 75 lessons in book two so we are trying to get to the end of book one by the end of this year and i bought all the extensions with this so i have the literature pack i have the timeline i have the test book i have the activity book we have everything and i'm really glad that i decided to buy those in the end we really liked this one. I wasn't sure how we were going to like it because it was more Charlotte Mason and my kids are not really like into Charlotte Mason type stuff. So I wasn't sure how it was going to go. Honestly, I did not know how he would like this one. I thought it would be too juvenile for him. That was my opinion. That was me thinking like, I don't know if he's going to like it. He really likes it. I, I was pleasantly surprised. So the, the lessons are short and sweet. I do have a video review, I think, of this one as well on my channel. If I do, it'll be linked down below. If not, I'll put it on my list of things to make in the near future. But again, I am not thinking straight because I haven't had coffee yet. So the lessons are short and sweet. I mean, the, le the actual lessons are only a couple pages in the textbook and I made a habit to try to do at least two lessons a week because that was what he, that, that was the pace he was chugging along nicely at. I mean, you there is no schedule, you can do it however you want. He learned a lot in here. It's kind of, it, it has that like Charlotte Mason, almost like living book type of feel and vibe to it. And they have a stack of literature books that go with the lessons, which is really cool. So we were reading books along with it. I love the books so far that they've picked out. I feel like the ones in the uh, second half are going to be even better just by looking at the list. So really, really great book. Okay, my first miss. I feel so bad doing this. I always feel like I'm doing something like that I shouldn't be doing. But this is just strictly my opinion for my kid. So. If you love it, that's great. I'm just saying it didn't work for us, okay? I'm not knocking the curriculum. I'm not knocking the company or anything like that. Master Books Living Art Lessons. Okay, there's one big reason why this didn't work for us and it's not anything about the curriculum. The curriculum was great. I thought it was beautiful. I, I really, really liked it. It was just too juvenile for my seventh grader. Um, that's it. It was just too juvenile for him. He he needed something a little bit more um, in depth. My kids have a lot of art skills naturally. They get that from their dad. It's definitely not from me. Yeah, a lot of the lessons, they were just a little bit, um, I wish you guys could see it. It's just, it was just a little bit too juvenile for him. So we're definitely gonna stick with Yellow Spot Sun because the, the lessons are, um, I feel like you can, you can make those way more um like adults even like i've even done some of the lessons and they've been fun so in the future i will definitely stick with yellow spot sun for art i just i have had bad luck with anybody except for yellow spot sun okay so we're gonna move into the language art section over here so the first one is spelling we have been doing a Becca spelling since I started homeschooling. It was just one of those things I didn't want to switch. Um, I tried to switch once to um, Phonetic Zoo 
did not work. I did Spelling UC, it did not work. So the Abeka spelling books have vocabulary and poetry usually in it, but we don't typically use those because we get those through the other language art things that we're doing. So we just focus on the spelling. We just do the spelling lists and the activities and yeah, so works great. Okay, so the grammar portion of our year was from Fix It Grammar with IEW. I have several Fix It Grammar videos on my channel. They're great. I don't have any, um, any complaints about it. It's 15 minutes. Um, the longer that you're with IEW's Fix It Grammar, the better you get. My oldest child started, um, gosh, he started, he started late, but he's like on it now. Like he's, he, he can get it without even blinking at this point, but it took him a couple years to get there. He played a little bit of catch up, but, um, yeah, super, super great. I really love them. Um, uh, my youngest started out with the nose tree. We are up to Robin Hood now, and I don't, I, I think he goes into the jungle book next year. I think it's Mowgli with, for next year, but yeah, I don't plan on getting rid of Fix-It Grammar. I can't say that like my kids are like over the moon enjoying it, but they wouldn't want anything else. You know what I mean? I, I can't really say that I have teenage boys who are like, yay, grammar, you know, <laughs> I, you know, but they wouldn't want me to switch it. Let's put it that way. I can tell you that much. They would be very upset if I switched. For literature, both of my kids did a combined literature uh, curriculum with great Christian stories from generations. So we did family style with this one as well. I love doing family style with generations because it's just so rich in, um, in biblical truth and they have such great resources. So the books that they read for this one was Fox's Book of Martyrs. Robinson Crusoe, The Holy War, and then the one they're reading right now at the end of the year is The Hiding Place from Corey Ten Boom, which is one of my top three favorite books ever. I feel like every adult needs to read The Hiding Place. Like if you haven't read The Hiding Place, you need to read The Hiding Place. It is, it, th that book is life changing. So this is for grades seven through nine. So I felt like this would be a really great fit for both of the kids and yeah, it's, it's pretty straightforward. You read passages, you answer questions, they have tests in there. Um, really glad we picked this one up. I would pick this one up again 150%. So love that one. So also for literature this year, my son was in Redefining School with Mrs. Mindy. You guys hear me talk about that every now and then. She opens up enrollment for her literature classes and her literature circles and things. I love her classes. She is a personal friend of mine at this point and the, um, my son just absolutely loves being in her class. So she does live Zoom classes with her literature class and they learn all about different elements of poetry and literature throughout the year and they read great stories, they read great classics, and she has two different classes, like one is like world literature, and then there's another one that is like American literature, and he's doing American this year, and he is finishing that up this month, I'm so sad, but yeah, they do live classes together where they get to share things that they've written, they get to share things that they learned while they were reading and things like that, so yeah, it's just, it's a really fun class. So glad that we signed up for that and he's gonna be doing more with her next year. I'm so glad since it's his last year of middle school before he enters high school. I'm glad he gets at least one more year with Mrs. Mindy. And yeah, so glad we did Redefining School. I think there's some resources on my channel about her, but she only opens up enrollment up every now and then. So unless you're on my email list, um, yeah, that's really how you know about open enrollment. So if you wanna get on my email list, that's the best way to learn about open enrollment for her courses. So the last one that I'm gonna share with you today is structure and style. So he finished up structure and style B this year. So he is done with that one until he does high school. So next year we don't have a structure and style other than like the, um, the actual like spiral bound books so I'm not sure, I'm still deciding on what we're gonna do, but yeah, I think I think I have, I 
think I know what we're gonna do for next year, but he loves this class. Like this class took him from, he could not write a sentence to he's writing his own books. So we were with a Becca writing before we moved to this one and he needed something that taught him how to write. IEW teaches kids how to write. And I feel like that's what's lacking with most writing curriculum is they just tell the kids to write something and then the kids can't do it and they get frustrated. Not every kid is just like a naturally born gifted writer where they just have all of these stories in their head that they can just like take the things up here and put them on paper. My kids were not like that. My kids needed help getting things here to the paper. And I think a lot of boys are like that. Girls, I feel like, have such an easier time writing stories. We're just naturally, you know, talkers and communicators where boys are not. Mr. Pudua, Andrew Pudua of IEW, teaches these courses and these classes are all um, streaming, but they have books if you want books. We do the streaming option. We love the streaming option and they watch videos for part of the week and then the other part of the week they're doing the assignment and they have grown so much. Like I wish you guys could see the level of writing they were at at the beginning of the year versus the end of the year. And every year I see so much growth and development. And I, I, I cannot tell you that there is another, if there's another curriculum that I would run to more than this one, <laughs> I would run every year to IEW because they are just so good at what they do. Love them. And I forgot math. Can you believe that? I forgot math. Okay, so math is because I don't have a book here. So math is teaching textbooks for us. So teaching textbooks is a little bit different for my seventh grader. He is actually a year ahead and he is in eighth grade math with them. So actually next year he's gonna be starting high school math with teaching textbooks, which kind of scares me as a parent just a little bit because I'm not good at math, but I have two kids who are really good at math and that scares me. So, um, yeah, he is going to be doing ninth grade math next year, but this year he did eighth grade math and I felt like it was the perfect fit for him because it was enough of a challenge to keep him engaged and to keep his brain working. But at the same time, it wasn't too advanced. You know what I mean? Like he need he needs somewhere a little bit more advanced, but not too advanced. So being a year ahead really helps him to kind of be engaged and be challenged without being overly challenged. So I didn't wanna have him skip two or three grades because I was afraid that that would happen. So I kept him one grade ahead and we've been chugging along ever since. He does great with it. He just finished it up like two weeks ago. So he's been doing like some IXL type of stuff online um, through the end of the year. He always really likes it. Like he never has any complaint about it. I think that teaching textbooks is the one thing more more so even than IEW where the kids would be like do not take teaching textbooks from me every year they say the same thing like you can change anything but do not take away teaching textbooks he really likes teaching textbooks both of my kids always love teaching textbooks like I never have a problem with them they have they do great every single year I wish I had teaching textbooks as a kid hands down I would purchase that again that teaching textbooks is actually one of the first things that I get every single year because I'm not teaching math. They don't want me to teach math and I don't I don't want to teach math. So they take a load off of my shoulders big time. All right, so that's all the classes that we did this year and everybody's been asking me for this video. They wanna know just like a wrap up of the entire year. How did we like it? What will we change? Our opinions on it? My kid actually really liked this year. Um, He's always been a little bit more academic, just naturally, like that's just his personality. So he naturally just gravitates to a lot of this stuff, but he really enjoyed this year. Like he, he didn't have any complaints about anything personally other than art. And yeah, I'm really glad that we bought everything that we did. I would rebuy everything except for the art, definitely. Hands down, I would rebuy it all. So, yeah, not a whole lot of negative this year. So maybe that's why I put off this video because I just really didn't have a whole lot of misses. I don't know. I feel like the longer we homeschool, the, easy it, the easier it gets to pick out curriculum that fits. And I don't have so many like 
um, regrets or misses when it comes to homeschooling curriculum. So this was a pretty easy, relaxed year. Actually, this was one of my favorite years. Be on the lookout soon for my curriculum reveal videos for the following year. Everything is starting to come in, so I will have that up really soon. I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and happy homeschooling.